whether anti-Semitism is taken seriously enough. Got a couple of your messages to read out. Uh, we were speaking to Naz from Birmingham earlier who called in and Naz was saying that actually as a you know in his mid 20s in a younger generation he's he's hearing a lot of a lot of anti-semitism he's hearing a lot of racism just just generally out and about what do you make of that is that something that you can share with have you heard a lot of racism have you heard a lot of anti-semitism just just casually just becoming part of day-to-day life let me know what you think about that oh three four five nine four four oh four four five text me eight one eight six nine what have you done when you've heard it as well i want to know what you think about that like i said i got a couple of messages i want to read out this one's coming in from chakar uh, i'm not anti-semitic there's no place for hate in politics and we should challenge all forms of hate if this is if this had been a mural about muslims this would have been considered freedom of expression and artistic interpretation of situations as seen by the artist so why all the fuss now thanks very much for that message chakar which came in on the email also a couple of Facebook posts. Sushil said, no, it is not being taken seriously. And also uh, Jayesh is saying, I think it's taken very seriously. Anti-Jewish incidents are always reported across the board and dealt with ASAP. What do you make of that as well? Is this something that is dealt with more than, say, other forms of racism as well? Let me know. 03459440445 or text me 81869. Um, got a few guests still here with us. I want to go to Laura first of all. Laura, who's an interfaith campaigner. Laura Marks. Um, Hello. So can I make two points that, uh, that really come out of this? The first one is something that uh, just uh, keeps coming up and I just want to talk about, which is this tip for tat business is not Yeah, helpful. this is exactly what I was going to it's ask you, actually. Helpful. We've had two callers and a message now all yeah. saying, actually, anti-Semitism is taken more seriously. Yeah, more seriously, less seriously. Exactly, yeah. This is what, exactly what I wanted to ask you about that. What exactly. do you... Who what cares? Do you th- if there is an anti-Semitic incident or something anti-Semitic going on, we should be noting it. If there's something anti-Muslim, we should be noticing it. If there's something racist against black people, we should be noticing it. One is not more important than the other. And this need to to have a hierarchy of victims is incredibly unhelpful because it leads me to my second point, which is what can we do about all this? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where it boils down to, which is one of the main problems we have is people not knowing or understanding each other. And we live in a society where people tend to live in their own little worlds. Um, And we've seen this again and again. Even your your Facebook world is your own little world. And people never meet each other. Now, it's particularly true with Jews because there's only 250,000 Jews in the whole of Britain. And 60% of them live in five London boroughs. And therefore, there are vast swathes of the country where there are almost no Jews. And as a minority group, people don't meet Jews. But it's not, again, it's not a particular tip for tat thing. People don't meet Muslims. People don't meet Hindus. People uh-huh. don't meet people who are different. Yeah. And uh, one of the initiatives I've set up, uh, particularly on, on Jews, actually, is something called Nisa Nashim, which means women in Arabic and Hebrew. And the idea is, and we've got 30 groups around the country now, to bring together the Jews and the Muslims to meet each other and to learn about how they're similar rather than how they're different. So Jews and Muslims are incredibly similar. We, you know, we came from the same heritage. We had the same ancestors. We, we, we have both had all sorts of uh, problems in life. We've both been immigrants to this country. We have the same scriptures. We have the same issues about um, uh, mm-hmm. morality. All sorts of things. And we don't know each other. And there's so much evidence now. I mean, Joe Cox is a fantastic example of this, about telling us yeah. how we need to be together. And we need to get to know each other because when I meet Muslims, more communities people, together, I realise that they are more like me than they are not like me. Most people are like me. Most mm-hmm. people are like each other. We all want to live in a safe world. We all want to bring our children up with good moral values. Ten fifty four here on the big debate. Call us oh three four five nine four four zero four four five. Text me as well eight one eight six nine. What do you make of what Laura was saying there? Actually, just need to meet more people, and that would help out a lot of uh, community relations. Let's go to Aisha Hazarika. Sorry, uh, Aisha, um, what do you make of this? I mean, one of the things that we had from our caller earlier was the fact that this is being blown out of proportion, uh, and in particular with uh, Jeremy Corman, uh, Corbyn's comments on Facebook, that was blown out of proportion. What do you make of, A, what he was saying there, and also the actual protest uh, yesterday? Well, I think it's an absolute disgrace that a former caller of yours said that this was blown out of proportion. If somebody, if let's say a conservative politician made disparaging comments about Asian people, 
your phones would be lit with um, people ringing up saying this is an absolute disgrace. You can't pick and choose which type of racism you're okay with because you happen to like one political leader. Anti-Muslim uh, sentiment isn't okay. Anti-black sentiment isn't okay. And anti-Semitism isn't okay either. And to all those people who are saying that this has been blown out of proportion, just stop and have a little bit of empathy for how lots of Jewish people are feeling. There are people on Facebook sites saying disgraceful things like the Holocaust did not happen. Anybody with half a brain cell and any empathy, mm-hmm. anyone who's ever been to Auschwitz, anyone who's ever seen Schindler's List, the idea that people are saying that the Holocaust didn't exist yeah. now, I mean, come on. Fair, fair points. I mean, I, I know exactly what you're saying there. And I, that those those cases, you know, there's no there's no excuse for anything like that. When we're talking about what we're talking about today in terms of like everyday or, you know, as someone was saying, casual anti-Semitism, is that being taken seriously enough? Um, And do you think enough is being done on that level? I think there isn't enough being done about it. I think Mm -hmm. if you look at the statistics, um, hate crimes are on the um, increase across lots of different religions and races, including the Jewish community. Um, and do you think I enough's been Corbyn. done by Jeremy Corbyn? Was him just no, making an I apology? And I, don't, I don't think enough has been done. And he's admitted in his latest letter yeah. that there are problems within the Labour Party yeah. with um, anti-Semitism. And I think you have to be really tough with this stuff because the thing about racism and hatred uh, what was, yeah. is once you say a little bit of it is OK, it just keeps breathing and breathing and breathing. That's a fair point. So Please stay there if you can, because I want to bring Imran back in here as well. Yeah. And I'd like you guys just to chat to each other for the last few minutes. Imran, you've been hearing what aisha has been saying there. Um, what do you make of it, actually, that she was saying, no, you know, it hasn't, not enough has been done in the Labour Party? So, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I'm, in terms of what's the, what's, uh, obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done and, and there's still, that that has to be an undergoing process where it needs to be reviewed. I don't have any problems with that, but where Corbyn says that this stuff has been done, this stuff hasn't been done and we're still working on this, that's not a problem at all, that's part of the conversation. Uh, and, and I've already sort of made comments as to why I think, what, what I think the, the angles of attack that has been used against Corbyn in this instance has been counterproductive and actually thought in that dialogue so you know I don't have any particular issues in what has just been said um, but I mean like the, the feeling that uh, you know especially with Muslims as to why uh, anti-Semitism th- that feeling trying to explain it why is that being taken more seriously than say Islamophobia is, is, is sort of fussed in a number of levels and let me just give you one sharp example so you know when anti-Semitism is reported as a, a religious hate crime um, if it's not dealt dealt through through the religious uh, hate crime um, uh, legislation it's referred to the, um, it's, it, the you know what's used is the racial hate crime uh, bracket because you know Jews identify the race uh, and what and the way in which our law works is that racial hate crime actually has more mm-hmm. precedence and it needs less precedence for prosecution than religious hate crime and that that does, that system doesn't really work well for Muslims sure. all we can do is invoke religious hate crime and that so it's it's, it's a bit of injustice there that you feel. President, yeah, you actually need to prove intent mm-hmm. that they, uh, uh, by essentially them confessing that they intended to do this for this particular reason for them to be prosecuted. So what you have, have is a, a complete imbalance, and that's why you have a lot more freedom when it comes to Islamophobia, especially in the press, yep. than you do to anti-Semitism. So that's why there's that feeling of... Away with it. Okay, well, thanks very much for your time there. We're, we're sadly out of time now for everybody.